Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel and today I have another book subscription to share with you. It was not sent to me for a review. Every once in a while I will get a Once Upon a Book Club adult selection from being on their VIP list but usually it's a recent or past box and lately I've been a subscriber again. So about a year ago I went ahead and resubscribed. It's really easy to skip if you read the hint and decide it's not something that's in your taste or something that you have time for. I usually do that when it's a romance, but for the month of August it was a historical fiction book and it sounded really interesting to me so I went ahead and got the box. Now it did come in a slightly larger box than usual, but it is always styled to look like a book so it can be really cute if you do get behind, which I have been behind on book subscriptions before. And if you have a bunch of these all kind of stacked up, it's actually kind of a cute little stack to have, uh, a little uh, TBR pile literal TBR pile. So they also have a middle grader subscription and a young adult subscription and all of those subscriptions I believe are the same price at $49.99 and that does include the shipping, domestic shipping. It will include the book that they have chosen so everyone gets the same book for each of those subscriptions, adult, young adult, and middle grader, as well as a bookmark. Sometimes there's a signed book plate, not always, but sometimes. Kind of an interview with the author as well as sort of a guide that they do and then three to five gifts to go along with so I've been pretty impressed lately they've been kind of upping their game gift wise so I have to say that I was really really pleased with the gifts for this particular book and the book was, it was a debut novel by Nigar Alam. I'm not sure if I am pronouncing that correctly, but it was called Under the Tamarind Tree, but just these beautiful like russet tones I thought were really captivating. And as, as well as the topic and the time period, it's not something that I knew a lot about because it was sort of this generational story, lots of secrets, lots of drama, some like kind of soap opery stuff, beautiful descriptions, um, again, and of a time and the repercussions of partition, which is, of course, when a lot of people were forced to become refugees and either have to go north or south, depending on their religious beliefs. Uh, so, and it was basically when the British pulled out of India and they sort of left everyone to figure it out. Um, unfortunately, a lot there was a lot of upheaval. So I thought it was a good book. I will say that there were so many characters and so much sort of hinting at these big secrets and it kind of took a little while to get going. I think I might have enjoyed this more if I had listened to the first half of it until those secrets started to unravel. Some of the secrets I felt like weren't even necessary and there were just so many characters. I've kind of found that lately that I don't know if it's just my attention span these days, but when there are so many characters and I'm trying to put all the pieces together, especially when there are two different timelines, I can get a little bit lost. But I think that I got the basic gist and by the end when all the stories unraveled, I was like, oh, okay, that, that, that makes sense. So let's go ahead and read the blurb on the back and then I will share with you all of the contents. I will read the passages if I have time. And um, if you are interested in subscribing to Once Upon a Book Club, you can get 10% off using the code NOEL10, which I will leave for you in the description box below and of course I will get a little referral credit which definitely helps me to stay subscribed to this. They also have all kinds of fun limited edition and holiday boxes so definitely be on the lookout for that as well. All right, 1964, Karachi, Pakistan. Rosina is running out of time. She'll lose her home, her parents' safe haven since fleeing India during partition, if her medical career doesn't take off soon. But success may come with an unexpected price. Meanwhile, the interwoven lives of her childhood best friends, Haris, Alia, and Zoher, seem to be unraveling further each day. The once inconsequential differences in their family's social standing now threaten to divide them. Then one fateful night, someone ends up dead and the life they once took for granted shatters. 2019. Rosina receives a call from a voice she never thought she'd hear again. What begins as a request to look after a friend's teenage granddaughter struggling with her own demons grows into an unconventional friendship, one that unearths buried secrets and just might ruin everything Rosina has worked so hard to protect. 
captivating and atmospheric, Under the Tamarind Tree shows us the high stakes ripple effects of generational trauma and the lengths people will go to safeguard the ones they love. So I, I did think it was interesting. Like I said, there was a lot of secrets, a lot of drama, a lot of sort of almost like missed connections. So there was like kind of a Romeo and Juliet element, you know, people caught between the people they want to be with and their familial duty. So I, I, I enjoyed it. I just, I kind of wish it had gotten going a little bit quicker and I feel like there could have been fewer characters so that we could have learned about those four important ones a little bit more. So the other items that we received, we did get a signed book plate, but it's kind of like a amalgamation of her name again, which is, I think, Nigar Alam. So it's like Nalam is how she signed it, which is interesting. And then we do have the quote card. There's always a five by seven quote card. Very beautiful. And this quote that is on the bookmark as well, which of course says, we have to decide to be happy even when things are hard. And then on the back, we have this nice uh, note from the author, which I always think is a nice touch. And if I have time, I will definitely read that to you. I haven't read it myself. I kind of forgot about it. Here is our guide. So the theme for the novel or the box was within the garden walls. And then of course, we don't know the title until it arrives, but you could probably figure it out if you kind of stay up on Goodreads or just like what's being published because it is newer, I believe. Um, on the interior, we do have discussion questions. So you can really do this like a book club. You could even read this with your own book club. And then of course they do Facebook chats uh, over on their Facebook group, which is really very big and also very active. And then finally, we do have a conversation with the author here. And then on the back, they always do something fun like an activity or just like an additional article. And I do really like it when they do recipes, although I fully admit that I almost never make the recipes, but we have some potato samosas with tamarind chutney, which that just seems to me like something that is delicious, but I would probably rather buy it from someone who knows what they're doing versus trying to make my own samosas. So let me know in the comments below if you love samosas. I, you know, any like little pouch of food in any culture is a-okay with me. I always think they're like the best. The, the portable food is always the best. All right, so we actually got four gifts for this particular box. Um, they didn't come until a little bit later, so let me see if I can remember. I'll just qu quickly flip. It was a little over 300 pages, I think. Um, and then in our first one didn't come until page 115. So this is what it looks like when you come across the page that says open your gift and you go ahead and read the passage and then open the gift. So let me go ahead and do it. Um, so it says, okay. When the film ended, Rosina quickly slipped the shell into her purse, ready to leave. But Saima grabbed Rosina's arm and gestured for the men to go ahead. I've had such a lovely time. We'll do this again soon. Saima raised her eyebrows all the way to her hairline. Rosina responded with nothing more than a brief stretch of the lips. So I believe Saima is one of her potential clients because, you know, she's trying to get her medical career off. Let me see if I can find a... A passage that goes a little bit better with the with the gift that makes more sense. Let's see. Uh, okay, so she is there with uh, someone else. So it says, he reached toward her with the other hand, his palm open. I picked this up for you the other day for your collection. She squinted in the dark, a cream scallop shell fanned in his palm, the ridges near the wider part a deep brown while a blush of orange smudged the narrow end. She felt the heat of the blush rise inside her gloriously. She couldn't help but smile as her heart yearned for him, for how easy it was to be with him, for being cared for and remembered by him. So I feel like that's a little bit better. So this is kind of her love interest um, and friend, Haris, but he's kind of a, a little bit higher social I was really impressed again with all of the gifts but so this one page 115 they do such a nice job with the packaging for this box so we have this nice like little dust bag which has a zipper and a handle so you could totally use this as a shoe bag for travel or for a dust bag for yes indeed this purse so we got the dust bag we got the purse it did come wrapped in plastic I think they did a really good job with this it's a very kind of classic little purse so kind of goes with the time so it actually says Rosina's purse and then once upon a book club and it has that same passage the first one that I read to you it's got these nice gold details on the handle at first I actually thought that this was a piece of coral but it's a gal laying on her stomach this bag charm reading a book which I don't mind a little bookish 
bit like that but this is nice it does have these loops so it has a shoulder strap and can you guys kind of see these nice striations on it so it kind of has that pretty uh, texture to it it's a pretty decent faux leather it does have a zipper top so let me open this up I've gotten bags from them before and sometimes they're good and sometimes they don't feel like the best quality so we have this nice shoulder strap and then inside uh, there's some extra things there's some um, packing materials but you can see there's a divider pocket with a zipper so really nice details lots of good structure I think it's actually really cute in the cream it's a good handbag size seems like something she would use and just to add to it so not only do we get the purse and the dust bag but of course we also got this which I thought was a lovely lovely touch we did get the scallop shell that Hadis has gotten for her it doesn't have the lovely reds and browns that they described but I just thought that was you know like a nice touch where they are really truly trying to bring the pages to life that's not necessarily like a high value item but you know they didn't have to do that and I, I appreciated that they did all right so our next gift was on page 219 so about 100 pages later let's see if I can find this one um, I think that was a really well done gift honestly by them so 219 let me see if I can remember what this one is uh, okay, let's see. I don't want to do too many spoilers in case you decide to read it. She shook her head, and I don't believe it either, but that's not why I'm here. I need to make sure my brother and crying outside the door grew closer and closer. A pen. I need a pen, she whispered. Rosina grabbed one from her desk and offered the file in her hand. Kulsum scribbled a telephone number, dropped the pen on the chair, and reached for the door just as it opened. The Aya walked in with the wailing child and a suspicious glance around the room, but there was nothing to see. All right, so we got this lovely little kind of manila folder, but prettier than that. Page 19 written on it. Let me open this up. And again, it was kind of a nice two-part gift that went with that passage. So we got this really pretty pen. I thought this was a really nice looking pen, gold, with these pretty like leaf patterns on it. And then we have a set of three file folders that totally match this really pretty blue with gold. Um, I thought that was really cool, right? Because it totally makes sense for her to have these file folders. Um, I don't know if I can pull it out of the sleeve, but then we have this texture right here, which is a little rosier. And then of course we have this one right here, which you can kind of see there. So three file folders and a lovely pen for gift number two. Gift number three came on page 272, so not much further later. 272, let's see if I can find this one and try to remember what it is. Ah, okay. Her mother said nothing until she carefully slid Faisal back into the envelope and clicked the attache case shut. Then she cupped the single bangle on her wrist and squeezing the sides of her hand, pulled it this way and that until it finally came off. I don't want it, Rosina leaned back, waving away the offering. I won't sell it on me and I don't need the money. Her mother laughed softly. Silly Rosie, it's not to sell. She took Rosina's hand and slid the bangle onto her wrist. Why wait for your marriage? Let's celebrate this. Your new path, your independence, just like your father and I both wanted. A lump lodged in Rosina's throat, gratitude and relief filling her. With her head bent low to hide her welling tears, she tucked the attache case back under the bed before straightening. So she's starting to learn some family secrets that have been kept from her, even by her parents, even from her best friends. Um, so we have this beautiful box again look at how gorgeous the packaging of everything is I think they do such a lovely job um, I have said in the past and some of you have gotten mad about it when it comes to these nice little boxes I do wish that they would do like a little sticker for the page number because if I chose to re-gift it to someone it would be nice for them not to necessarily know that it came from a book box but it's kind of like little like uh, like almost Mindy um, different drawings so we open it up and we got a bangle. So this is actually a cuff instead of like a more tradition, traditional Indian bangle. But I did think this was really cool. So it actually says Rosina's bangle. And then let me go ahead and pull it off of this backer card, which I haven't actually done yet. So um, it does say something and I'm not sure exactly what it says, but we will find out together. So they have this nice attachment here where I can hopefully get this off. All right, so it says, find your happiness 
Isn't that cool, you guys? I hope you can see that. So it says find your happiness, and of course, it's great because it is a gold cuff, so it is something that anyone can kind of shape to fit their wrist. Um, I don't think it actually says Once Upon a Book Club on it somewhere, but I thought that was lovely in terms of a nice kind of souvenir from a book box. It's really pretty. It's very elegant. It's not like a traditional Indian or Pakistani bangle, right? Because you know you can wear those so much and they can be really fancy and, and uh, they could be something that's passed on for when you get married. But it is something very meaningful and celebratory and beautiful. And um, I thought this was a good interpretation of it. Find your happiness. So good. So I love that. I thought that was awesome. So again, good gifts in this box. So if there are any left and you were thinking about it, it was a good read if you like historical fiction and there's a little bit of romance and mystery in there too. And um, the gifts are really solid. So the last gift came on page 297. Let me find this one. 297 and you can get 10% off. So 297 came in this beautiful box. So again, this is another one of those boxes that I'm just like, it's so pretty. And they just did all of these beautiful like rust colors to go along with the cover of the book. So the whole book just, uh, the whole box just feels very curated. I, I love it. I thought they did, I have said it 20 times, but I will say it again. This was a really good box from Once Upon a Book Club. So the last one, I'm trying to remember what it was. <laughs> so it says, all right. The fan whipped overhead, sending the sweet scent of burning incense sticks to all corners. Even though the windows were open, heat radiated from the number of people filling every chair and every inch of white sheets covering the floor. Rosina wiped at her damp upper lip with the back of her free hand. The other hand held Alia's fingers, limp and clammy cold. So again, we're going back and forth between those two time periods. And then even within those time periods, there's like flashbacks of like the time of partition. Um, so there's a lot of timelines happening but uh this was a very simple one i haven't really given anything away because they chose passages to go with the gifts that didn't necessarily give away the plot or any of the secrets so this is what it looked like again and this was a cool interpretation as well so we got a nice uh little stick of palo santo instead of i thought we were going to get like the more traditional incense sticks which i've gotten book boxes before and i don't mind if it's a scent that i like but we also got basically a candle holder. So you can definitely, uh, you know, light the Palo Santo and then put it in there and let it burn and it's going to catch all of the ash. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, the incense holders that they do have for sticks where it's like kind of that long um, tray so that it catches the ash that falls off at an angle. But here you can just put the Palo Santo there and so the ash is gonna fall down here. But then it's got double duty. So you can use it for your Palo Santo or your incense, but you could also put a taper candle in there. So this is a nice ceramic. And I just thought that would be a great little taper candle um, holder. So I just really, really solid gifts this time around from Once Upon a Book Club. So we wound up with Rosina's purse, which has great gold handles, faux leather, obviously, a nice pocket inside, lots of good structure. Uh, dust cover, a little bag that you could definitely use for travel, and that purse does have a shoulder strap, or like I said, as a shoe bag could be great, or a tablet or a book cover. So many uses for a little nice kind of faux suede like this. And then I even added the touch of the shell. Then we got our file folders, as well as that beautiful matching pen. So for your professional life, because that's part of the story is Rosina proving herself as a professional. Uh, we got the lovely bangle that says, find your happiness. I, I think that's nice. And then finally, we got this incense holder slash candlestick holder and a nice Hmm, Palo Santo. I think that's Palo Santo uh, piece of wood. So I thought that was awesome. Let me go ahead and read the little note here from our author and that will be it for today. So it says, Dear reader, my favorite books have always been the ones in which I feel deeply connected to the characters, where my heart breaks and soars for them, and I'm left thinking about them long after the story is over. I also love secrets, lots of secrets. With Under the Tamarind Tree, I wanted to give my readers all of this, characters and relationships evoking strong emotions, a page-turning story filled with revelations, and all of it set against the backdrop of Karachi. I hope you feel like you're truly transported, like you were just there yourself, immersed in the sight 
sights and sounds and smells of Karachi. But mostly, I hope you thoroughly enjoy this story about Rosina and her friends, and you come away with love for the characters, appreciation for the place, and maybe even an answer to the question, how far would you go to protect the ones you love? Thank you for reading. All my best, Nigar. So I did like the book. I'm not sure that I was totally, totally satisfied by the ending, but again, we're reviewing not just the book, but also the box. And I think that Once Upon a Book Club hit it out of the park this time around in terms of quality gifts that I could definitely use definitely made the box worth its price and I had the opportunity to read a debut novel from a new author and I would be happy to read another one of her books. Uh, I think she does a good job in terms of description. I just feel like it could have been a little bit more simple or maybe I just needed to be in the mood for something a little more complex like this. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please help me out with the thumbs up. If you're looking for a really cool gift, Once Upon a Book Club might be an awesome option and I'll see you all very, very soon in my next unboxing.